the lens also becomes more political. It becomes more reflective of dramatic changes in, in politics and in mores and in, in society. Sex, culture enter the daily lives of which we see, and the preponderance of artists, being usually liberal minded, have an effect upon that too. In progressive eras, there's more ongoing conflict with government, with religion, with societal establishments. Meanwhile, in conservative eras, when it tends to be more critical of the artists, they generally tend to herd themselves together against the establishment. And that contrast, that dynamic is worth noting too. So that, for example, in the 60s, when Bobby Kennedy was assassinated, a man named Paul Fusco, a Magnum photographer, got aboard the train that was carrying his body from New, from New York to Washington and photographed along the railway routes, people saying goodbye. He took those pictures in 1968 and put them away and didn't bring them out again until 1998. In a time, more conservative time, he brought them out to show that sort of tendency. Other photographers, Rachel Corday, for example, photographed in the 1960s single mothers in the American workplace certainly ahead of its time. Very dramatic, only rediscovered in the recent past decade. The point is that, let's take feminism for example, women's bodies could be used symbolically in collages such as this in the 1960s. But growing feminism and the growing sensibility in the 70s transformed all that. We had new messages being made and new questions being raised. Sally Mann photographed her own children and people thought they were too sexual or too frank. You will see pictures showing documentation of people in society including such things as Nan Golden's own self-portraits of herself beaten up after a date. Sexuality becomes something that can be representational in pictures. Something that's boldly and graphically developed, but still hinted at. Or it can be something that is culturally significant too. Andy Serrano's picture of what he called Piss Christ, a picture of a crucifix taken in a jar of his own urine to document bodily fluids and to show his, his, his status of the work. This raised a hue and cry when the NEA funded an exhibition that included this picture and it created a big political firestorm. Meanwhile, others went in and photographed pictures of uncompromising beauty, only to turn out that those pictures were not of models, but rather pictures taken in the morgue. Can death be beautiful? Should it be photographed? All those questions arise. These are new things that are going on in that era. Ronald Reagan and Gorbachev's pictures combined together to make a picture that was called Warhead was a political commentary, but also a dramatic example of combination printing. Let's look at the people who did it most, which were, of course, the social realists. Those socialists that got together and cut up pictures and again made them collages, such as this one from the Soviet era in the 50s and 60s. This practice would continue on too, because it was effective, but it was not practiced just by one time, or one side. Gene McCarthy, during his Senate hearings, used a photograph and cropped it to make a different political point, and it was considered a fabrication, a fake, and the press burned him for it. Whatever side you come down on this, he used a simple technique, cropping a picture, to doctor a political point of view. Those sort of things happen. There is this political commentary in all the work. Whether it celebrates the nuclear era or such things as the famous picture of Che Guevara. That photograph, this is the entire frame of that photograph. A snapshot done at a, at a meeting. It was cropped 
printed a bit darker, given a more serious look, and it became an entire poster, an entire representation of movement. And it became something that was used frequently. I always find it ironic that when Che was killed later on, they identified him by comparing him to a photograph in a magazine. But that picture lives on. It's used and reproduced countless times in any different ways because it represents rebellion. It represents revolution. It's something that has taken on a life far beyond its meaning as a simple snapshot. And that whole social realist propaganda look is absorbed into the color and into the posterization of imagery. And it was used by the Communist Party for many years. And by the socialists. And even eventually by our current president's political campaign in 2007-2008. That classic image, by the way, was mimicked on the covers of the magazines the month that he was elected. It was not an original work of art. It was based on an AP photograph that you see here that the artist, Shepard Ferry, took and made into a poster. And by the way, later on claimed that he it was his own original work until they found the AP photographer in his photograph. And Ferry had a lost his court case in that case. That's a sidelight, but it's interesting how an image is generated from nature or from life in this fashion. And you can even do this today. This is my campaign poster for Dog Catcher. But there's a whole app out there that you can use to make your own posterizations in the social realist form, even today. Conceptual photography, it exists, where theory was used to inspire illustration. Yeah, sometimes it's impelled by politics or culture or something, but it's always the idea of the fact that you employ manipulation in some media to express an idea or a thought or a theory or some feeling. It's the triumph of that idea over the image, as it was said. Certainly Ed Ruscha is the champion of this starting in the 50s with his photograph of 26 gasoline stations. Plain, mundane, but still a statement of what is there. This is Ed in some of his folding publications like that. Others like Ken Josephson, who manufactured whole imagery so that essentially he tied in the real world with the photographed world. What does a photograph do? What does the real world do? Or people like Bart Parker, who carefully combined words with images and with different printing techniques. People like the Starnes twins, who actually did collages of work. Not simple, nice, seamless work, but actually brutally put together compositions. Or Robert Heineken, who used not photographs, but cut out things out of magazines, pictures and illustrations or photographed the television tube so that other media was mimicked in the course of his own production of his own work. You could cancel the image if you wanted to. You could play with the theory of what fell from your roof, as in the case of this dropping balls. Or you could, like John Fall, use it to make satire. This is his constructive image of what he called the Bermuda Triangle, made with yarn and pinions on the beach and the tide coming in and taken in Bermuda. So it's a Bermuda Triangle. You can have fun with the image as well. You can also find symbolization in it too. Signs or sins. You could construct imagery or you could create puzzling diptychs or multiple images. Or you could do, well, this is counting to ten in French, un, don, trois, etc. Or is it? You can even take the medium and just manipulate it by hand. Heat the emulsion up and melt. 